Hello, this is Damis, and welcome to the Let's Play of Castello Rotten Bum. I am joined today by my husband, Mike Zadie. Hi. Uh, this is a Brazilian game made by Tech Toy, as you can see, and uh, it has a bit of an interesting story. We're going to skip over the words here because they're in Portuguese, and I don't speak Portuguese. I don't even speak Spanish. So I guess those are the characters, and once upon a time, the kids go to a mysterious magic house, and the littlest kid drinks the Kool-Aid, which turns out to turn him into a baby. Baby making Kool-Aid. And there he is. Uh, and then apparently the world's gayest man. Or the greatest pimp. Oh, okay. Or the greatest pimp. Uh, tells the, the two remaining kids that they have to find a magical potion to turn him back. So you have the option of playing as Pedro or uh, Diba there. And I chose Diba, the girl. Uh, now we're in the robot room where there the are some... Creepiest, creepiest maid robot I've ever seen. Yes, and he tells you what go, go, what door to go into, but in, again, Portuguese. So I had to guess. And you've just immediately been shrunken. Yes. You are shrunk down to tiny size and you must make your way across the this laboratory floor with such terrible enemies as buckets. And this rocket that is miniature and there for no reason whatsoever. And quite hokey. Yes, uh, and there are a few sensible objects, such as these uh, beakers here, but most of the objects make no sense. Right, because everyone has beakers laying around in their kitchen, along with um, clocks that represent that look like Santa Hooters. It's it's <laughs> surrealist. Yeah, go with it. More than a little. Uh, in any case, actually, this isn't the kitchen. I think this is supposed to be the laboratory. We'll get to the kitchen later, as oh. you'll see the horrors. Because we've all got a laboratory in our house. Well, that's why you had the magic Kool-Aid that turned... And the creepy robot, of course. Yeah, exactly. So the idea here, because it is a kid's game, is to jump from number to number in the correct order. Now, I think you get punished if you jump on the numbers in the incorrect order by falling down. However, I couldn't really tell you, because this game has such terrible detection of <laughs> hits and... Uh, jumps and pretty much anything that involves two objects colliding with each other uh, that it could be that you can just jump on any of the platforms and sometimes you fall down randomly anyway we go over a couple more beakers and we get to this lovely set of venetian blinds here and we see again the horrible detection that this game has yeah it I... doesn't seem like it wants to recognize what you're doing at all no but it does want to use the slide whistle so oh, well. you know <laughs> can't argue with that uh, you also can't really jump off this little pool string here, which, uh, by the way, if you notice, the pool string doesn't go up. The little doohickey just slides up magically. Well, they actually, I mean, they do that. It's just they don't do it that way. Stop getting technical on me. I know. So, <laughs> I, so looking at just the way this thing's controlling, how is it that's actual controls? Um... I have seen snails that control better than this, uh, and faster and uh, with more grace. Uh, yeah, the controls are incredibly sluggish and temperamental. Uh, we'll get to bats later on. We all oh. know how favorite bats are, and we have no salami or anything to fight them with. Uh, and when you press the down button, when you're near a bat, you're supposed to be able to duck like you, you do in the rest of the game, but it suddenly gets, you know, a little picky about what exactly is down and, and sticking to it. Oh, look, you made it. Yes, finally. yes, I did. Um, and uh, there also conveniently happens to be a little bouncy thing there. Now here you actually, you can't bounce on any of the bubbles but the middle one. But, you know, they don't show that to you or anything. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Yeah. It, well, yeah. it makes you bigger. It's Apparently a makes you so. bigger machine. Just in case you're small already and on the table. Exactly. Huh. So uh, the chef or somebody tells you, go on to the next room. There's some text. I can't read it. All right, the robot tells you, go in the next door. I'm going to call him Pipey Buckethead. Okay, Pipey Buckethead tells you to go to the next door. Um, now here, I go through this pretty quickly. Uh, if you'd like to, however, you can go through a fast-forwarded version of Pedro trying to do this, this stage. It took me at least five minutes to figure out what you have to do, which is run across the table and that will make the the thing rise you can't walk you can't jump you can't do anything else you have to run actually i think it's five minutes when it's fast forwarded like we were looking at it right. yes any case so you have to jump through various kitchen implements here and um 
I like how they're teaching children to be afraid of your dishwasher because it will fling silverware at you. Well, mine does. Um, and uh, you do have health in this, and, and you have three lives and a continue, but um, oh, you don't use them much. Now, this is, this is another fun what-the-heck part. Uh, it's a matching game, uh, and you have to match what's in the upper left-hand corner by opening whatever drawer it is in. Uh, unfortunately, not all these are drawers. In fact, most of them aren't. Most of these you can't open, and when you get to the little ones, you can't even tell whether you can open them or not. For instance, there... I thought for the first at least ten playthroughs of this that you couldn't open that particular uh, cupboard thing. I think they sell this cabinet at Ikea. Uh, yes. I think they call it the Yambo. Yes, uh... <laughs> this is the Yambo. Uh, it's under the, uh... The Lovecraftian. Yeah, the bafflement series of interior decorating and design. But uh, they go through uh, a horrendous number of these things that you have to match. Uh, and I guess they're kind of everyday foods, but I don't understand what they're really teaching you by matching foods. Uh, I, that was me losing there, by the way. Apparently I didn't find it fast enough. I can't really figure out what the time limit is or isn't on any of these. I can't really understand most of the idea behind this game. But um, more or less, you have to find it somewhat quickly and you do a number of them and magically, randomly it decides and, and then you see a fairy godmother. But uh, we're going to be stuck on this for at least a little while longer because, damn, they just make you go through a whole hell of a lot of them. All right. There's the fairy godmother bee thing. Oh. And uh, she tells you something about, okay, here's the next ingredient, and go on. Yay! Uh, I'd like to point out these doors in the room uh, could be easily drawn by a five-year-old. That's a clippity-clappity still. I, I think it said something in Portuguese. Uh, 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 now, you saw a weird little flash there. Um, these guys ask you... Questions, of course, in Portuguese. Now, for some reason, it bugged out on this one and uh, asked me all four questions for the monsters in the same uh, chunk. Now, what it's supposed to do is ask you one question per monster, but then whether you answer it correctly or incorrectly, you get worked back to the start of the level. Or at least the best you can figure. Yes, yes. Well, I think there's one that has something about four, and it has shape, so I think square is the right one, and the others I just figured out by trial and error. Okay, now, who is that creepy little guy? I have no idea, but he gives you help. He looks really skeezy. Like, he looks like Yoda's, like, skeezy brother that Yoda doesn't talk about. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, Yoda's got some relatives, you know, in every family there's one of those. Right. But uh, here's the infamous bats. Hey, bats. And, we uh, love bats. You'll see me ducking here, but uh, it's very difficult, and as you can hear by the sound, I get hit a lot. That's not because I have bad reactions or anything. That's simply because pressing the down button makes you want to kill yourself at this point. Uh, it's not consistent or anything like that. Uh, and along the way, we have these spiders, which you can at least run under, but we also have drops of water that are just... Uh, pretty much unavoidable and as cockroaches or something was that what that was supposed to be uh you want me to tell you what anything in this is supposed to be yes i want you to describe it all and make a wiki page for it okay well that's me getting killed by the bat and you can see i get little stars and stuff and then i have to go all the way back to the beginning and, of the level yeah easy brother and get hit uh by the falling drops of water again because of the unavoidable drops, you can only get hit about one or two times before you die on this level. So it's actually extremely difficult. Uh, perhaps there is some magic way to avoid the water droplets, but in at least two hours of playing, I never found it. So if you know, write somebody who cares, because I sure don't. I'm never touching this game again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I'm not sure what part of the house this is supposed to be either. If this is like the attic or... Uh, the basement or mysterious scary place uh, there's another monster there but I, I avoid him uh, because I don't want to answer any more questions in Portuguese and I know from going through this before that I can just walk the other direction and get to the same place mm -hmm. uh, because for no 
real reason it loops, but only in this part. Um, yeah. <laughs> 